What's up guys? We're here at AMC Town Square with Chasing Cinema. Mr. James Shu. Town Square and we got a little <gasps> Oh god. Ouija. Ouija the origin of evil. Now I don't know if you remember. Did you see Ouija the first one? No. Yeah, no, I don't blame you because Oh, this movie, is a sequel? This is well, this is a prequel. <laughs> Yeah, because there was a movie called Ouija that no one saw and they all should be very thankful for because that movie was damn awful. It was just like the most generic, like, it is like Netflix horror section generic. And there are some good, no, no, calm down, calm down. Uh, uh, there are some good, there, there are some good, yeah, there are some good movies on Netflix, mind you. But let me tell you, Ouija was not one of them. And like, there have been a lot of like spinoffs and like Redbox, like Ouija movies and, um, the only reason why I care to see this movie is because a director that I do like, he made his name is uh, Mike Flanagan. He made Oculus and the movie on Netflix that is really popular, Hush. Two movies that I really enjoyed. He's taking this movie on, so I'm hoping he's able to breathe some life into this and actually kind of tell the story and do it justice. Um, plus, it's really the only horror movie we have, like for the month of October. Next week How we have weird. Inferno, which will be scary but in a different sense. Um, and we don't really have like a good horror movie. No That's paranormal kind of and no saw. It's weird, yeah, no paranormal, no saw, and it's weird, it's like, they, the, the, the new trend is horror movies in January, February. And like, we have Amityville coming out in January, I think, or February, we have like that new movie with, um, oh damn, who is it? James McAvoy, where he plays a multiple personality from, from M. Night Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan Ding Dong. Yeah, And split. normally, <laughs> normally I wouldn't be excited, but that actually That dude looks good, good right? Bro. Yeah, but it's coming out in January, and it's just like, why the hell are these movies not coming out in these Halloween months? But anyway, I'm hoping to get a really good Halloween fix, even though I've been watching all horror films for the month of October on my 3 and 6 5 day movie challenge. Click my updates right there on that white eye. Bing. We also reviewed Jack Reach and Never Go Back like that. Bing. Right there. But let's go see Ouija. An hour and 30 minutes. Hopefully this movie that's, can scare me. It should me. be good, nice and short, quick. So that's the way to do it when you do horror. So let's see if you're going to be scared out of your pants. Or Ouija. Like, will I? I, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so I just got a Jack Reacher online. Ding! But this is all about Ouija. Origin of Evil. Chasing um, Cinema. Is this a movie that James Shu needs to watch? No. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Not not because it's a no. bad, not because it's a bad movie, but I don't think first of all you'd really care to see it because you already don't know what's going on in the movie. Not that it's like a movie where like if you haven't seen the first Ouija, you will have no idea what's going on. But the movie does like end where the first one kind well not necessarily where, but it definitely sets that up. Um, but it is a very slow paced horror movie. It's a very styled horror movie. Um, very cool things like the first two things you see are really awesome. We see the Universal logo, but it's the 1970s um, Universal logo, and the title card of the movie feels like a 1970s title card. I like like if you remember, like um, the Hateful Eight, how that looks. Yeah, that's I like very it. similar. The only problem with this, and I'm sure this is because of budgeting reasons, because Bloom House, the guy who directs like or produces Jason Bloom, uh, who d produces all of these horror movies like Conjuring, you know, Insidious, all these. Make them cheap, and they get them out. They get them made. They Couple make million money. dollars. Yep. Make fifty. Is that the only problem with this? Is that like even though this movie has amazing like costume design, setting design, like really makes you believe you're in the '70s. They even go as far as putting cigarette burns in the movie. And if you aren't familiar with a cigarette burn, is that's pretty cool. I didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah. When when um, that was on purpose. Yeah, they like they had to put them in because this is shot on digital, and that's the only problem is it looks too clean to be a movie made in the '70s. And there have been like a lot of horror films that have come out recently that have like replicated the '70s look, and they're shot on film or they're shot on and made to look grainy. That's the only thing is like that would have captured that '70s feel so much better. Anyway, if you don't know what cigarette burns are, basically in the olden days when they were actually using a projector and they would switch reels, the cigarette burn would be the simulation that a reel had just changed, and it's basically like a little black dot with um, yeah. you know that kind of pops up in the middle. Uh, at the top corner of the screen and those are in there and I was like what, 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 what? <laughs> I was like did I just see a cigarette burn at first because I didn't know that was going to happen and uh, which is very weird because it's in a digital movie they obviously just did that to give it effect anyway I like that beyond that like beyond like the 70s feel and style of it the movie works um to a certain degree. However, the movie kind of loses itself in its story and it ends up going in a very conventional area and it ends up be kind of losing all the interest. I mean, we're following this family who, of course, encounter a Ouija board and a little girl is able to talk to some spirits in it, you know, and she's very creepy. The young girls in this movie are very, very creepy and, well, the little girl is very creepy. The, the older sister is good. They're both very, very, very good in their roles. But I don't think this is a movie that um, 
you know, takes it to the next level. Uh, like I said, Mike Flanagan, the director of this movie, did Oculus, which I thought was so creative and went down so many interesting avenues and it wasn't typical, it wasn't traditional. I really enjoyed it. Hush, though a traditional story, did a very interesting twist, played with our senses. Uh, the character in Hush is deaf and it's a home invasion movie where she cannot hear, so a lot of the times he takes out audio, so we are feeling that effect. Very cool. Ouija feels like he brought this 70s style to it, but beyond that, the rating of this movie feels very, very traditional. Damn. Not as bad as Ouija, where it's like this like just cheap slasher movie. Um, the first hour is like, there's not much going on. It's a lot of setup and a lot of creepy things happening very smallly. The ending, the, 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 um, ending goes in this very traditional climax zone like the the explanation of things and the reveal of like the spirits obviously like who these spirits are it just doesn't like it's it's kind of loses all of its like punch i don't think it was a bad movie to be honest i think i actually liked it better than jack reacher never uh never go back um but i just feel like the ending kind of lets it all just kind of go in that traditional route and, and, and loses its originality but i think for the style alone it's worth seeing hey i dig it I dig it. I dig it. There's one more movie they can watch this you week. You dig it, you dig it. Oculus Never Let Go. Uh, Oculus Never Let Go. Uh, Jack Creature Never Let Go. Yep. And Never Go Back. And also Keeping Up With The Joneses. And Keeping Up With The Joneses. And Boo A Medea Halloween. That's right. Which I actually really want to see. And if you don't know, let me give you a little tidbit. Because here at Chasing Cinema, I do my best to educate viewers. And I don't mean that in a condescending way, but just in a cool way to teach something. So, who created... Tyler Perry. This movie. Which movie? Hall Medea's Halloween. I thought Tyler Perry. Kind of. Actually, the idea was born from Chris Rock. Mm. Top 5, a movie that Chris Rock did uh, two years ago, I believe yeah. now. Uh, very, very great movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. In the movie, Chris Rock is walking with, I believe, Gabrielle Union, and they are walking across the street. They pass a the theater, and they, it's really, really busy. There's a huge line outside, and, and Gabrielle Union, I shouldn't say Gabrielle Union, because that might not be right. So the lady that Chris Rock is walking with says, what, what's, what's, what's that? What's in that theater? And Chris Rock jokes, oh, it's the new Medea movie. It's Halloween Medea. And Tyler Perry saw this and heard the reaction it got in the theater, decided to make the movie. Really? Yeah, that's the origin of uh, Abu of Medea's. Halloween so for that alone which I think is a very cool like like origin story I, I I'm interested in seeing this and I that alone I, is I, just to watch yeah because it. it's I wonder if they're gonna do any throwbacks to Chris Rock or because I mean he told that story on um, Tyler Perry told this story on uh, I want to say Jimmy Fallon or, or one of the talk shows so it's not like something he like is like oh no don't let anyone find out this isn't my story he was just like oh my god I bet you there would be a line in front of a theater if I made that and you know that's it's pretty confidence and Tyler Perry is an, a person that I've always felt gotten more flack than he deserves like that dude uh, like built an empire you know he's worth a hundred million he's worth a lot of money yeah, he's and worth like, over a hundred million what he's dollars. done I think is just because of this. It, yeah. yeah, and I mean, and, and, and what started is just like people didn't think it would be funny. He started writing his own plays. He produced his own plays. He acted Financed his own plays. Them. And they were like, oh, you're not going to do well. They do well. They make their DVD releases. People see it and say, you know what? Um, he's like, I should make a movie. No company really wants to work with it and do a Medea movie. So what does he do? He builds his own goddamn production company. Excuse my language. I didn't mean to get out. I'm getting pumped up though. Dude made his own production company. Now makes the movies that he wants to make, has television programs. Like that dude is a great great self-success story like his movies are not like his content or not that dude is just like a pure entrepreneur and good on him for doing that and I, I love him in Gone Girl yeah and he's a really good actor too like I mean you know Medea As might Bax not be your Baxter thing Baxter Stockman though yeah <laughs> yeah that's gonna yeah yeah that wasn't very good but I mean it might not be your thing but that wasn't his fault but I, I mean think. you can't you can't just give that guy you know crap for doing the movies that he likes to do and you know I do will say that I haven't seen all Medea movies or all Tyler Perry movies I've never seen, I've seen one a few. really you've never seen any they are pretty ridiculous. There is some pretty like outrageous comedy things that happen, but you know what? He does always throw in some nice twists and you know has some good themes. And, and I don't think people should hate on him that much. So maybe go check that one out if that's what you uh, expected to see. I'm I'm definitely I would like to go see it. In seven days, we're gonna be lit on fire because we're gonna be in Inferno, which I'm sure refers to Dante's Inferno, which means the Seven Rings of Hell, because we're gonna be watching Dan Brown's Inferno, the Tommy Hanks trilogy, and uh, conclusion. What the hell is it called? Why do I keep forgetting the name? The, the Tom Pierce, Hanks. No, um, the movie. Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci Code movies, yes, the trilogy and that. And obviously we had the Da Vinci, you know, and the second one, I believe it was something with Michelangelo. I don't remember. But in the third one, this one we're going to be focusing on Dante's Inferno, the Seven Rings of Hell. So, um, of course, you know, I mean, we talked about this more in Jack Reacher. Not something we're particularly excited about. I did like Angels and Demons. 
Uh, I don't really remember the first movie at all, nor do I care to rewatch it. So hopefully next week we have a sleeper hit and it's like a big surprise and we're all happy. Yeah, sleep. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you sleep. You never know. It could be the most entertaining movie of the year. Maybe I have mail like Zootopia. <laughs> what if Kubo? they were just like, you know what, guys? I feel like we went in a certain way with the first two of these movies. But Tom Hanks, Tom, can you take home this DVD of John Wick? And like, we want you to emulate that in the new movie. And he was just like, John Wick and people. <laughs> and it just like went to a whole other level. You never know. Jack Reacher. You'll see what I'm But there is one way they can know if they come to our movie premiere. That's true. Always come to our movie premieres every single Thursday. Uh, we always have a great crowd, great audiences, people that don't talk and annoy you. You don't got to worry about stuff like that here. We have all good friends. It's, just friends. it's always a fun time. Yeah. Also, make sure to go check out this dude's channel because on here you learn some stuff about movies, but here you can actually use, learn useful stuff on this guy's channel. Learn how to improve your life, learn how to be happier, learn how to make every day the greatest day of your life. And until next That's week, quote, Mr. James Chasingcinema.com is known as Film Lover's website. <laughs>